Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at the water of crystallisation, hydration of salts, and what that little dot in the formula means, and how to do the calculations for it. You may be very familiar with hydrated salts in the form of copper sulphate. That blue colour that we actually see is the hydrated form. What you can see in the video here is the anhydrous form. And you will see it change colour to the blue form as water is added. It is a rather. This is in a reversible reaction with the anhydrous copper sulphate, which is the white form of it. So the video, it started off white. I added water. It went blue. I'm now going to heat up the copper sulphate and we can watch it lose the colour and go back to the white anhydrous form. If we're looking at the words, hydrated means with water and anhydrous means without water. And there are different formulas for these because even though it is copper sulphate and basically wet copper sulphate, we can write this down in the form of a hydrated salt. Our formula for copper sulphate is CuSO4 and this dot here shows us it is the hydrated salt and there are five waters in this. This is a solid crystal structure that you can see. This is in a reversible reaction with copper sulphate, the white solid, and the water that has been evaporated away. This dot shows us that this is the water of crystallisation. There are five water molecules in this crystal. The water is part of the crystalline structure. So we will get the blue copper sulphate having a crystal structure, whereas the anhydrous white is more of a powder. Just like we saw in the video in the last slide, we can experimentally determine the water of crystallisation. You need to heat things in a crucible, so slightly different to what I've got here. And depending on your exact method, you may or may not have a lid that is needed. The first stage is to weigh a dry and clean crucible. Dry is really important here. You can add a known mass of your hydrated salts, but it's really important to weigh it again to make sure everything has gone from the weigh boat into the crucible and you get the exact weight. You need to heat it strongly and to do this we are going to be resting the crucible on a clay triangle while we heat it over the Bunsen burner. And because we're going to be picking it up again you need to leave it to cool. We need to record the new mass of the crucible and work out the difference. Different methods I've seen do or don't have a lid, but what the lid would do is to stop the solid salt spitting out, so it's going to improve the accuracy. There are a number of different ways that errors can creep into this experiment and thus affect the accuracy of the answers of the results. This is a common question you might get in the exam. So using a lid, as I said in the last slide, it will stop us potentially losing any solids if when you're heating things vigorously, sometimes the solids can spit out and we will lose solids like that. However, if your lid is on too tightly, then that can actually prevent the water being lost from the crucible and then you will not properly get the anhydrous salt at the end. If the crucible isn't fully dry at the beginning, then you are adding in more water, you are adding in more weight than is actually lost from the hydrated form of the salt. So the masses, the difference in mass will be different and that will affect your calculations. If the amount of salt you put in is too much, if you're putting a very large amount of salt in there, then it's actually going to be really hard for the hydrated salt in the middle at the bottom to properly turn into that anhydrous form because the water just won't be able to evaporate. Alternatively, if too little salt is used, then you're not going to notice the difference in mass and that is going to make your calculations really hard. So here are some experimental results. You can see the mass of the crucible before, you can see the mass of the crucible with the hydrated salts and the mass of the crucible with the anhydrous salts. So we need to do a couple of calculations now. We need to work out the mass of the hydrated salts, which is the mass of the hydrated salt plus the crucible, minus the mass of the crucible, that will give us that difference there. We need to work out how much water was actually lost, so that is the mass of the crucible and the hydrated salts, 
minus the mass of the crucible and the anhydrous salt. And that will give us how much water has been evaporated off. And then we need to know the mass of the anhydrous salt. So we need the mass of the anhydrous salt minus the mass of the crucible. And that will give us the mass of the salt that is left after the water has been evaporated away. Now we have all of these numbers, we can work out what number comes after the dot. We're going to be doing mole calculations, so we need to work out the MR. Please, when you're doing this in the exam or in class, use the MR of the periodic table that the exam board has given you. I'm just using a periodic table that I've got on my table. Yours might be to a different number of significant figures or decimal places. So the MR of copper sulfate, we have one copper and the mass is 36.5 and one sulfur with mass of 32. Oxygen has a mass of 16 and there are four of those. Add those all together and we get an overall mass for copper sulfate of 159.5. Now we need to know the MR of water and this is one that I know because I've done it so many times before. Hydrogen has a mass of 1 and there are 2 of those plus oxygen which is 16 giving us an MR of 18. It is always a good idea to write it down in the exam to prove to the examiner you know what you're talking about and potentially you might make a mistake in this step and you want to be given error count forward marks so they can see where you might have made the mistake. We need to find out the number of moles of copper sulfate and water. So we do mass over MR, that is mass from the question. So our moles of copper sulfate is the mass of the anhydrous salt divided by the MR of copper sulfate, so divided by the 159.5, which will give us 0.02 moles. Now we need to work out the moles of water. So it is the water that has been lost, 1.8, divided by the MR of water, which is 18 gives us 0.1 moles of water that has been lost. Now we need to work out the ratio of copper sulfate to water. So we look at the moles, the ratio of moles of copper sulfate, the ratio of moles of water, and then we can divide by the smallest number. So 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.02 will give us 1, and then 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.02 will give us 5. So for every 1 mole of copper sulfate, we have 5 moles of water telling us that the formula for the hydrated salt is CuSO4 dot 5 H2O. Sometimes in the exam you might see that 5, the number that we're looking for written as an X, so it might say dot X H2O. Another example here, 4.77 grams of hydrated zinc sulfate was heated and it was calculated that the mass loss was 2.10 grams. Determine the formula of the hydrated salt. First thing we need to do is determine the formula, so Zn, and we know sulfate is SO4 minus Zn is plus 1. So the formula for zinc sulfate, nice easy one, the one to one ratio, ZnSO4. We can work out the MR of this, so zinc is 65 plus sulfur, which is 32, plus oxygen, which is 16 times 4, gives us an MR of 161. MR of water, we know this is 18, but it is always worth writing it down just in case you make a mistake. We can now move on to work out the moles of water. We know the mass loss is 2.1 because it told us that in the question. So it's 2.1 divided by 18 it gives us 0 0.116 moles of zinc sulfate. We have the mass of the hydrated salt, which is 4.77, minus the mass that was lost to give us the mass of the anhydrous salt divided by 161, which is the MR of zinc sulfate. This will give us 0 0.0166. We can then work out the ratio of zinc sulfate to water. So that is 0 0.0166 in ratio 0 0.116. We divide them both by the smallest number, which is 0 0.0166. And for zinc sulfate, that will give us one. And for water, once we round the number up, we will get seven. It's very, very close to seven. Giving us a formula for the hydrated salt of zinc sulfate as ZnSO4.7H2O. Ouch! Oh, that's quite a lot. This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>